Madhavi Maganti has a background in the area of developmental psychology with a specialized concentration in the area of infancy and early childhood development. Her goal is to examine how babies understand the world around them and focus on fostering neurodevelopmental and psychosocial outcomes in at-risk and typically developing infants and children. In the newly set up Child Development Studies Lab, the focus centrally is on examining the atypical and typical patterns of cognitive language and socio-emotional development in infants and children aged at birth to six years of age. One of her projects is focused on investigating the development of intersensory perceptual processes in at-risk infants and tracking the cognitive outcomes of these infants before two years of age. There are multiple risk factors that predispose neonates and nearly 12% of infants between 2 to 9 years are at risk for neurodevelopmental delays, according to Inclin Group study by Aurora et al. 2018. Hence, this research has a significant impact on understanding the neurodevelopmental outcomes in infants. The core emphasis of her research is to advance the prevention of developmental delays, devise and plan intervention to enhance recovery and reduce neuromorbidities in children and infants and thereby promote mental well-being. Combining basic research to an integrative translational research, she is leading a consortium of ECD specialists for Project Bloom, which is an emerging blueprint for strengthening the delivery of child care services on skill for transforming early childhood psychosocial development and reducing neuromorbidities in children from low resource settings. Eventually, in the newly set up Child Development Studies Lab, she aims to create ECD interventions to mitigate the effects of risks arising from prematurity and early adversity by improving neurodevelopmental outcomes in at-risk infants and children. Her mission, Every Child Smile Counts, is a convergence of these efforts and initiatives. Let me just start with this favorite phrase called uh, every child smile counts. What it essentially means is it points that ensuring the quality of care and health and development of every child who is born is very important. But how do we ensure this? It's just not only the family systems, but family needs the support of the community and healthcare systems to be able to ensure uh, how every child who is born is able to realize the developmental potential. A large part of my work essentially is focused on this broad discipline of ECD, essentially to understand what is the development of the child, how is the child developing from the time the child is born until six years of age, which is the most critical and sensitive period of development in a child's life. Uh, a lot of programs essentially have emphasized on the first thousand days of life and zero to three years being the most critical and crucial years. So the thrust of my area of work is essentially to understand how children who are high-risk infants and also healthy infants develop from birth to six years of age. So to be able to improve the quality of health of the child in the first thousand days does not essentially mean that we would focus just only on the prevention of communicable or non-communicable diseases and improving the nutrition of the child. That is important to improve the growth of the child, but development of the child is much broader than what we would essentially look in. This child who is born is at risk for any kind of later developmental delays. Is this child going to develop normally? Now, how do I try to understand? To be able to make this kind of predictions, we need to look into a large part of basic research. But limiting just to predictions is not only important. We need to also provide interventions to support the parents in helping the child or promote the development of the child. So combining a large part of interventions is 
important and that is why uh, in in an indian context this is very important because the real time problems of how do we improve the child's development especially the child uh, from low resource settings or any of this are much more vulnerable to uh, developing any kind of delays as we can see from the recent statistics on um, children's neurodevelopmental status and all of those so that is why to really bring about the thrust of ecd i want to combine both basic and also translational research to address this whole broad area of work this helps us to understand better understand the developmental complexities involved in trying to facilitate or provide interventions for uh, for infants who are at risk uh, in in a large part of our of my work we have tried to use uh, in applied research predominantly we prefer to use qualitative uh, methodologies in terms of conducting interviews with a community workers or disability specialists that helps us in trying to get a sense of what are the real world uh, problems that each of these uh, people or professionals are facing this helps us to plan better interventions so that's why we use uh, some parts of qualitative research combining this with most of quantitative methodologies helps us in a large part of my basic work uh, helping us to track the development of high risk and um, not at risk infants and children the first project that uh, we doing in collaboration with dr arti maria from uh, the department of neonatology uh, that's presently in progress is trying to understand the development of intersensory perception in at risk uh, infants and not at risk infants this is primarily a project that focused on trying to predict if we can make a prediction on um, if the child is developing any kind of specific developmental delays or any kind of developmental delays then we have a next project that we are looking into language assessments and want to understand how children language development is progressing um so this is a project called as multilingual assessment instrument of narratives this is a project in collaboration with dr natalia gagarina who has developed this um uh, tool called as multilingual assessment instrument of narratives um we are using this picture cards and stories to use it as a measure to look into the language processes or language diversity in bilingual children and especially india being more bilingual or multilingual in context we want to see how children's linguistic structures are developing both in their l1 and l2 languages one of the other projects that we are also looking in is trying to understand about the tool who's tool called as international classification of functional abilities functioning for children and youth uh, which is which is a tool that helps us in terms of trying to understand children with neurodevelopmental disabilities not from a limitations perspective but the perspective of trying to understand children with neurodevelopmental uh, disorders or disabilities from functional perspective how does the functioning of the child rather than what the child is not able to do smaller projects where we are trying to understand uh, what are the resilience and coping mechanisms parents use in terms of raising their infants um especially now that it is covid time we really want to really see how this pandemic has an effect on parenting skills and which could in turn have an effect on the infant's development um we trying to look into some of these aspects and um in 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 general sense we also want to track and see if there are any early adverse effects from maternal stress 
during pregnancy uh, in terms of intergenerational transmission of uh, uh, stress and how this can have an impact on the socio-emotional development of infants. Over the past 20 years of my work, there have been many anecdotes, but every anecdote converges on one single idea on how do we ensure the healthy development of the newborn baby or the child who is born. In my own clinical work, I've seen many times that intervention at the right time helps in improving the optimal development of the infants. And when we were to see how this child is developing and having overcome the early adversities, it is, it is an anecdote by itself. It's one of the best satisfying moments to me is to really see a child where we have provided intervention and child being able to develop optimally is one of the most satisfying aspects of my research.